Hi, welcome to my channel, Living My Best Life with Lisa Marie. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's get crafting. Back in the fall, I made some porch sitters and I'm gonna make another one. I had an extra piece of wood left and I was it has already been painted white with primer and I'm gonna go over it with another coat now and I'm just gonna make it a brighter white. Now obviously this board is a lot bigger than my crafting desk so I had to kind of set up a little stand here for it to be on and I'm just standing up in the room and you'll see my dogs walking around, tried to crop it as much as I could but they're there and one of them does wear a diaper, you will notice that. And after I'm done painting, I did use my heat tool. I finally broke down and bought one. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. I ordered these really cool decals on Amazon. I will put a link down in the description also for the heat tool. And I'm gonna put Mod Podge down first so there's a smoother surface for the decals to stick on. And they're just sticky on the back. You just peel them off and I'm placing them right on top of that Mod Podge after it dries. And then I'm gonna actually put Mod Podge over the top of every decal that I use because I wanna seal this since it's gonna be outside. And I am using the Aileen's decoupage, premium decoupage. I don't know what it is. It's like Mod Podge. It's just a different brand and it costs a little less when you get a bigger bottle. And I have these stencil letters that I have used before on the last port sitter I did. That's why there's paint on them. And I'm just going to position for the word welcome. And they're really cool font. I really like it. I actually ripped the E so I had to use some tape to kind of put it back together again. But hey, it worked. And I'm going to put Mod Podge underneath that also. And I heard that helps with bleeding. So I'm going to try this. And this has got to do the trick because I'm a terrible stenciler. And this might be my first time doing a good job. So I'm going to have to tape them down one letter at a time because of the tape it's going to put too much space in between the letters and i don't want that so i'm just going to do one at a time and i got this paint sample from lowe's it's really pretty kind of sage color light sage and it's a valspar paint this is a regular house paint and i cut off the end of a little foam brush just so i could have a little like spongy thing to dab it on i couldn't find my regular dabbers I'm, they're somewhere in my messy craft room that i'm in the midst of redoing right now And then I'm holding down the parts of the stencil that stick up a little and I'm, there goes the dog with the diaper. You just saw that. <laughs> and I'm just going carefully and I'm going to do the first two letters a little bit slower and then I'll speed this up because you don't need to see me do the same thing over and over and over again. And here's the big reveal to see if this worked and I'm really excited. It did. Oh my gosh. I now know I need to use Mod Podge underneath when I stencil. I'm so excited. So now I'm moving on to the E and just positioning so I know exactly how far apart and then I'll tape that on. And now I'll stop talking and let you watch the rest of the word welcome get done. I've seen on Pinterest where people are putting on their welcome signs, welcome-ish. So I found some letters that are stickers from the Dollar Tree and I did the I-S-H on the bottom. I think it's so cute. And part of it is like you're saying, you're welcome, depending on how long you stay and depending on who you are. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that was kind of a good laugh and I like it. So I'm covering those letters with Mod Podge. And now I'm taking that sage paint and I'm going to take a little art brush and I'm going to fill in all the letters a little darker because I intentionally was dabbing very lightly so I wouldn't bleed. So now I'm just going to go back and fill in all the letters and also the O has a little break in it and that's not really a style I like so I'm just going to fill that in. It was the only one that had it so that was kind of funny. And now I really like the way they look. I think they came out great. And more Mod Podge because I'm going to add another decal on the bottom. This particular roll of decals that I ordered on Amazon came with a bunch of gorgeous florals and a bunch of butterflies. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to position the florals and the butterflies all over this sign and just kind of wherever I think it looks pretty. There's no rhyme or reason. And then I cover each and every single one of them with more of, it's not really Mod Podge. I keep calling it that, but you guys know what I mean. It's, what if I say aliens? Nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to keep calling it Mod Podge, even though we know it's not. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> And now I'm going to put some more of that down, put the bigger decals and then some more butterflies. 
And then when I'm all done with that, I'm going to put that Mod Podge over the word welcome because I want to seal that paint as well. I will probably at some point need to go back and deal with the edges because I did not do that, but I want to make this a two-sided porch sign at some point, and I wasn't ready to do that today. So I left that part to be done the next time I do the backside. And the backside will probably be for summer. This is for spring, and then you know I'll have a summer one, and then eventually I can do a fall and winter one, which I did for my neighbor, but I don't have one. So there'll be more projects coming down the road. In the spring and summer, I do a little garden, and I'm going to give you a little preview at the end of this video of the starting of my garden. It's real short, so stick around to the end. I am really loving how this is turning out, and I hope you guys like it. It feels very much like springtime to me. It's also very welcoming, so, well, welcoming-ish, right? <laughs> Today's video is a collaboration with my sweet friend Jamie from Simple Roots Simple Living. She is such a cool person. I really enjoy her. We have come together to do some outdoor decor DIYs for you. She does some really cool videos, lots of farmhouse, shabby chic, rustic, and outdoorsy type stuff. She is so much fun. You've got to check out her channel. I will have her video link and channel link down in my description box. Please tell her that Lisa Marie said hi. And if you're here from Jamie's channel, welcome. I'm so happy to meet you. And I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel as well. I hope you'll consider joining me on YouTube by hitting the red subscribe button and then turning on the notification bell so you always know when I have a new video coming up. I do all kinds of DIYs in different styles. There's something for everyone. For this DIY, you need four of those little terracotta pots. They're four inches, and I got them at Walmart. I actually had three at the moment, so my husband was running out to get me a fourth one. Some succulents, a little plant hanger, and the little coconut basket thing. I don't know what that's called that you put inside the plant hanger. And those items are all from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna remove the chain because I'm not gonna be hanging this. And I'm literally going to put it over the top, like upside down basically. And I'm gonna use some rope. I'm gonna stab some holes around the outside where each of the little um, wires are. And I'm gonna tie it on because I wanna make it nice and secure. I didn't have like a really big needle and thread. So what I did was I just took the little scissors and I kind of pinched the end of the jute twine on that and I fed it through. So I was just careful not to cut it when I did that. And it worked really well actually. Now you may not know what I'm making yet, of course I haven't told you either, but I'm using these little styrofoam balls that I got, I want to say at Walmart, they were like six for less than two dollars, I'm pretty sure it was Walmart. Anyway, I'm using my utility blade and I'm cutting it because I need to make a head and a tail. Yes, if you've guessed right, it's going to be a turtle topiary. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so cute. So I'm just kind of figuring out what a turtle head would look like shape-wise. So I've got a little neck coming out and I'm hot gluing that on. And then I'm going to use some twine and using that wire on the plant holder thing, I'm just going to kind of secure it around because I'm not sure if, if the hot glue is really going to work enough. So I just want to make sure. So I'm, I'm also going to put hot glue under every little piece of that twine just to be extra careful. And then I'm going to get that other ball and I'm going to cut it and you kind of make it look like a turtle head. Don't ask me what a turtle head's supposed to look like because I'm just guessing. Anyway, it kind of does look like one when I'm done. And I'm gonna tie that one on as well with the jute twine, hot glue it, and then I'm gonna work my way around to the tail and cut a narrow, narrower piece of the foam and do the same exact thing.
I have some Spanish moss, a really large bag that I got at Walmart, and some tacky glue that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use that and just brush it all on the styrofoam head and tail and attach the Spanish moss. I'm also gonna use some fabric adhesive spray to help the moss stay down because the tacky glue is only working directly on the styrofoam, but when I wanted to add more on top, I needed to do something extra. Now I really wanted it to be a bright green, but I didn't have that kind of moss. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the moss I have, and then I'm going to take some Waverly's uh, color fern, and I'm gonna turn it into green. See, you do what you can with what you have. <laughs> and actually it does turn out really good. So you just have to, it's a mess. That's the only thing, using a small brush and I'm just kind of like splattering it everywhere. And I, when I say that, I mean literally, it started getting on all kinds of things. If you notice all of a sudden my paper got dirty, everything. Now I'm gonna build up the inside because I need a place to put the feet, which those little terracotta pots are. So by this time my husband has gotten back with the extra one and he got it at Walmart, but it was just shy of four inches. So I had to put something on it to try to make up for the difference. That was a little challenging, but we made it work. It just looks like the little turtle's walking now, like he's got one leg up, like he's taking a step. And I'm using some shipping filler, like that was in a box that was surrounding equipment. And I just cut it to fit inside. And I'm using a lot of hot glue to secure it. But for the legs, I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue, making sure they don't touch each other because I heard if you let the hot glue touch the E6000, it starts cooling off the hot glue too fast. So that's why I don't. And I'm holding it down gluing it in place and I'm actually going to do that with all four of the pots and on the one that was slightly short I'm putting some of the tumbling power box from Dollar Tree. Hey I just wanted to remind you that I'm going to show you the beginning of my garden at the very end of this video. Once the legs are on I am poking holes through the top using a screwdriver and I am attaching the succulents. And I think the turtle turned out really cute. You'll have to let me know what you think. I've never made anything like this. He's just adorable. Did you know that I'm on social media? You can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Same name, Living My Best Life with Lisa Marie. Come on over and say hi. I got this little green planter at the Dollar Tree along with these uh, lace doilies. And then this is some spackle. And I think I got that at the hardware store because I needed a, a larger amount. And I'm gonna take the spackle, I'm going to dish it into a little bowl and I'm gonna add some water and mix it up to kind of like a cake frosting consistency. I guess that's the best way to describe it. You have to be careful though, because if you let it sit for too long, it gets hard and then you have to add more water. And I kind of had to play with it because I had let it sit maybe a little too long while I was preparing the little planter. The technique I'm going to use on this today, I learned watching TikTok. It was really a cool thing. So I'm going to take my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to sand every part of the outside and then about in maybe a couple inches into the inside as well. And if you've noticed, I have holes in the bottom. I had used this little planter last year for a real plant. And now I'm gonna take my Kills white primer and I'm going to paint everywhere that I sanded because I needed something for the paint to stick to and that shiny plastic is not great for that. So it's sticking really well with this. And this is kind of my base coat. So when I first started out, I thought, oh, I better tape down the doily. No, not even necessary. So I went to all this trouble, applied the spackle mix, and I guess because it was sitting so firmly on there, it ended up ripping the doily. So then I had to do some touch-up work. So going forward, you'll notice I don't bother taping it down. I just lay it where I want it, rub the spackle stuff over it using a brush, and when I take it off, I get this really cool texture, which you haven't seen yet because I'm having to peel that up. There it is. How cool is that? It looks like pottery. So now I'm just, look at that. I'm just holding the thing down and painting on the spackle. And then in a second, I'm just gonna lift it up and it works so much faster. And I must've spent 10 minutes taping that stuff down. So if you decide to try this, don't bother taping. It works so much better if you don't. So now all I'm doing is 
just cutting up a paper doily and putting it wherever I want and just creating little like random shapes and designs and just having fun with it and it's really cool. And now I'm gonna take that same green paint that I used earlier and a little bit of this warm buff by Apple Barrel. So first I'm gonna paint all around that spackle technique thing with that green and then I'm gonna go back with the other color over just the raised parts. Now, a few of you have asked me about these brushes that I use, and it's called DIY Arts, A-R-T-Z, and I'll put a link in the description. I got them from my daughter as a Christmas present, but I know where she got them. They are awesome. There's blending, and there's pointy, there's all different kinds, and this one is real pointy, so it's easy for me to get in there without knocking off those little pieces of spackle that I put on there. Now I'm gonna mix a little bit of the Burnt Umber and the Warm Buff by Apple Barrel to create a distress look, and I'm gonna, a little more than dry brush. And the reason I'm not too worried about it is that I could go back over it with the green. It did get a little heavy handed, but I wasn't sure how it was gonna look until I did it, so I'm happy with it. Now I'm gonna use my rose gold metallic paint by Folklore, and I'm just gonna go in on those raised pieces. I wanna give it that little bit of shine, and I think that rose gold color goes the best with what I'm doing here, and I'm loving it. I really do, and I think when it's outside and the sun hits, it's gonna be really pretty. I'm really loving how this technique turned out in the end, and I wasn't sure. Took it outside, sprayed a clear glaze, and it's done. The garden is coming up. You guys will have to let me know what you think about these three outdoor DIYs. Lots of fun to make, and they just add a lot of color and just a little bit of whimsy to our little front porch area. Don't forget to go visit Jamie at Simple Roots Simple Living. The link to her video for this collaboration and her channel will be down in my description box for you. She's just a wonderful person. You'll really enjoy her videos, and be sure to tell her that I sent you over. And now, as promised, a quick preview of what my garden is going to be like. I got these seeds at the Dollar Tree. We're gonna plant green beans, basil, kale, and two different kinds of spinach. I also have some tomato seeds, chives, green onions, and strawberries. Right now, we put them in little toilet paper rolls, labeled them, and they're sitting under my grow light. Most of the seeds have already started to sprout, and pretty soon I'll have to put them outside in little planters. Stay tuned for future garden updates. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the time that you take to watch my videos. It means so much. I will hope to see you in my next video and please remember that you are a blessing to me.